we're here to talk to you a little bit about our careers in outdoors. Um, anyone that's worked in the outdoor industry before probably knows that, um, you know, if someone comes up to you and asks what do you do for a living, you say, I uh, work in outdoor adventure. They say, oh, that, that, sounds, that sounds good. How did you get into that? And that's exactly what we're here to talk about. Um, we've both taken fairly different routes into our current positions where we are in the industry at the moment. So Dave's going to talk a little bit first of all about his route into the industry and then I'll follow on from there. Great. Hi. Um, as I've said, I'm David Rafferty and um, what I basically did is I decided to, um, well, I was working in London in this fair city, the nation's capital, and I decided <coughs> that um, I had enough of London, so I decided to go traveling and on my list of places was Nepal, Turkey, Morocco, and I decided not yet. I decided that I'm going to go to North Wales. So what I did is I sold everything I had, I bought a tent, and I went to North Wales for about two months and wild camped. Went, stayed in a lot of bars, campsites, had friends come up, went climbing, and really got into it, and realized that you didn't have to go to Nepal or Morocco, or, although I'd still like to go. Um, um, so I decided to go to North Wales, and from there, it was raining, as you could imagine, and I decided that the best thing for me to do would be to try and find a way of getting work. So I found a company called PGL, which I'm sure some of you have heard of, and they are here around and kind of making themselves present. And I went there, and I had a great summer, and I made some good friends, and from there I realized that this was the industry that I wanted to go into, but I wanted to kind of learn more about it. So I decided the best thing to do would be to study it. And I decided to go to Brighton University, um, which the course is run at Plumpton College, which ironically I now work. But before we get there, what happened was is I wanted to learn more about it. I wanted to learn more academically about it. I wanted to know how the outdoors could help people and how I could help myself by helping people in the outdoors. So um, I studied there for two years, and I decided that the best thing that I could do would be to lead expeditions. I like traveling, I like going around, I like, you know, being outdoors. So I decided to go from there to Africa. And I went to Malawi <coughs> and I worked really hard with nine teenage girls who surprisingly didn't do my head in as much as I thought they would have. But from there, um, I decided that I now needed a, a job that I could do when I wasn't leading expeditions. So I basically bug diver. Um, and bug diver, and then I bug diver some more, and eventually he gave in and gave me a job. And um, so now what I do is I, I teach um, first diploma at Plumpton College, and I also help out on other programs, such as the degree program that I started working on, that I actually studied myself, and um, I lead expeditions in the summer when I can, and I like teaching. So the way I've kind of got into it is I've kind of realized that my passion is the outdoors, and that's what I wanted to do full-time as opposed to working in London, where there's not as many trees or mountains as you'd first think. Um, so now I'm going to pass you over to Ivor, um, and what he does and how he does it, and uh, here you go. Right, so um, slightly different route for myself getting into the outdoor industry. Um, I'm still not quite sure how I ended up doing the job, really, if I'm honest. I didn't enjoy school that much. I left at 16 years of age. I'm massively dyslexic. Uh, I grew up in Essex, not really well known for its mountains and its rivers. And now I'm head of an outdoor education department in an educational establishment. So it's a, it's a strange sort of route that I've taken. When I uh, first left school, I actually trained as an agricultural mechanic. It didn't take long for me to realize that actually this wasn't the job for me. It was around Christmas time, laying in a ditch underneath a tractor trying to change a gearbox, and I sort of thought, 40 years' time, you know, this may suit some people, but it's not the thing I wanted to do. It all changed for me, um, thanks to Climber magazine. On the way home from work, sometime around the Christmas period, I called into the local post office, and there was a copy of Climber magazine. It looked pretty good. Inside, there was an advert for an outdoor instructor training post up in North Wales. North Wales, the key for both of us here. Um, so, basically applied for a place, got a place, packed up my job, went and lived up there. Uh, the accommodation was pretty rough. In fact, one of the houses we were staying in burnt to the ground while we were in it, which was a, an education. Um, it was freezing cold. It rained a lot. 
I worked longer and harder than I ever had, and I actually really enjoyed myself. I'd found something that you know, really lit my fire, if you like, something that I was really passionate about. Um, and my work life almost sort of merged and became my hobby as well. Um, so if I wasn't working, climbing, canoeing, kayaking, looking after groups, team building, I was out canoeing, climbing, working with groups. After a year and a half in North Wales, I um, decided for different reasons that I needed to move back down to the southeast, to be near my family again. Freelanced in a number of different outdoor centres before eventually being offered a, a full-time post at a, a great centre called Hindley Warren. Um, Hindley Warren is owned by the London Federation of Youth Clubs. And I was really lucky. I spent quite a lot of time there. They invested a lot in my training and my development. I also got to work with a real wide range of groups, everyone special needs, challenging inner city kids, the whole, the whole sort of spectrum. After a few years there, I'd got to senior instructor level. I met a, a gorgeous young lady who's now my wife, and we decided to head off to New Zealand for a little while. So I headed off to New Zealand, and that's a sort of a whole different story, if you like, but that opened a whole load of opportunities for me as well while I was out there. And it was while I was out there, I realized I needed to have a plan. I needed to come up with sort of the way to further my career. I didn't just want to be an instructor. I wanted to get a wider view of the industry. I knew that there was no way I'd be able to afford to, to go and do a degree. So I'd have to gain some management experience or gain some admin experience another way. So when I got back, I managed to get myself a place with World Challenge Expeditions. It's quite a well-known uh, sort of corporate-style expedition organiser. They organise lots of trips for school groups, and they work, go into schools and work with the schools as well. This was a really um, intense but enjoyable learning experience for me. We, uh, I was doing more admin than I ever done in my life, and I, I, you know, with very little in the way of typing or keyboarding skills or anything like that. I had to pick all that up as I went along as well. Working with um, school parents, staff, uh, and students much, much more closely than I had done in the past. And through that and the training, again, I was, as I said, I was fortunate they gave me a lot of training while I was there as well. Paid for me to go away and lead groups on a lot of expeditions to Namibia and Morocco and other far fun pl places. Uh, and that sort of gave me my sort of management skill, if you like. I did fairly well there. And about four years ago, I was approached by uh, Plumpton College to take over their outdoor education department and run that. Uh, at the time, there were 15 students, and me plus one other member of staff. Um, the induction process was interesting. I basically walked in and they said, there's the students, there's the minibus key, off you go. Um, we're now at the point where we've got 150 full-time students, uh, 10 full-time staff. They're all... Uh, very talented, obviously, qualified in a different, a whole wide range of skills and extremely hard work. And it's down to them that we've sort of increased the number of students that we've got on the course, uh, the different courses we offer. We offer everything from 14 to 16 day release programs right through to a, a foundation degree. We've got plans to run a full degree within the next two years as well. Students take part in expeditions all over the place. So again, they get to go kayaking to Morocco. Most of them are away on a ski trip this week. We've got plans for an expedition to Peru, Slovenia. Um, so although we're based in the southeast, we aim to get them out to lots of challenging areas to develop their skills. Now, during my time in the industry, I've been lucky enough to work with quite a high number of sort of really inspirational people within the industry. And what that's taught me is you need to be, you know, you don't necessarily need really high level qualifications to do well. What you've got to have is the right attitude. You've got to be hard working. You've got to be professional. You've got to be known for your sort of good timekeeping. And that, through that, you can work your way up through the industry. And that's the attitude we try and get across to our students. We're not going to, if they sign up for a course with us, promise them all the national governing body qualifications in the world. We're not going to um, say that when they leave us, they're going to get a job as a head of an outdoor centre. We're giving them their springboard, if you like, that they can then choose to go on to do whatever they like with. Because I really strongly believe that outdoor adventurous activities gives you a great foundation for whatever, you know, by taking part in that, whatever career you choose to follow, you've got a real good level of basic core skills that can transfer over into whatever route you choose to follow.